Mythbusters was arguably one of the most popular TV shows during the early 2000s and 2010s that dominated pop culture. From exploding toilets to escaping from Alcatraz, they combined science, engineering and creativity to get to the bottom of the biggest myths in history and Hollywood. So how did this powerhouse TV show mysteriously and abruptly end? Each episode of Mythbusters typically focused on two or more popular beliefs, internet rumours or myths that were portrayed in Hollywood movies. In fact, they would even have special episodes dedicated to debunking themes such as sharks, pirates or movie franchises. At the end of each episode, the myths would be ranked into one of three categories, busted, plausible or confirmed. The show ran for well over a decade, and as amazing as the show was, the key to the success of Mythbusters was the presenters. Jamie Heineman is a special effects expert, most iconically known for his beret and walrus moustache. He was born in Michigan on the 25th of September 1956, and stated that as a kid he was very problematic, leaving home at 14 and hitchhiked all over America. After graduating from high school in 1974, he earned a degree in Russian linguistics from Indiana University. It seems like Jamie's lived a thousand lives before his career on Mythbusters, working a whole number of jobs throughout his life, including a boat captain, certified dive master, wilderness survival expert, linguist, pet store owner, animal wrangler, machinist, concrete inspector, and a chef. However, in 1997, he took over the Colossal Pictures Special Effects Workshop located in San Francisco and renamed it to M5 Industries, which would eventually become the main set for Mythbusters when it launched. When asked by the show's producer, Peter Rees, whether he would present a TV show, he stated that he needed someone to present with him as he didn't believe he was entertaining enough by himself. Needing another experienced special effects expert to pair with Jamie, the Discovery Channel turned to Adam Savage. Adam was born in New York City to his psychotherapist mother and his father, Whitney Lee Savage, who's best known for his painting, filmmaking and animation work on Sesame Street. With the help of his father, Adam began acting and had five years of acting school, with his early credits including voicing animated characters on Sesame Street and an appearance in a Billy Joel music video. Abandoning his acting career at 19, he decided to pursue something that was more hands-on. Like Jamie, he worked a whole heap of jobs including animator, graphic designer, carpenter, projectionist, set designer, toy designer, and a gallery owner. During this mixed bag of a career, he worked as a model maker on huge movies like Star Wars and The Matrix. So when the opportunity to present Mythbusters came around, it was the perfect marriage of everything he loved. With the perfect chalk and cheese dynamic of Adam and Jamie, the show debuted on the 23rd of January 2003. With the first season only containing three pilot episodes, it received positive reviews and was reinstated for a second season with eight episodes throughout the rest of 2003. As the seasons progressed, members of Jamie's staff at M5 Industries were introduced and began to appear in regular episodes. During the second season, artist Carrie Bryan, builder Tori Belisi, and metal worker Scotty Chapman would be dubbed as the build team and organised as the second team of Mythbusters. However, during the third season, Scotty would leave the show, being replaced by Grant Imahara, who was a colleague of Jamie's and was hired to provide the team with his electrical and robotics experience. The build team would operate and work out of his own separate workshop called M7, investigating separate myths from Adam and Jamie in each episode. So how and why did this behemoth TV show abruptly end? While it may seem like the show ended abruptly to most fans, it was actually a series of internal strains within the cast and show over a number of seasons that caused its demise. Now it may be hard to believe, or be common knowledge depending on who you are, that despite the on-screen relationship and chemistry, Adam and Jamie didn't actually like each other at all. In fact, they were both extremely transparent at the fact they don't have a friendly relationship. Adam stated, We don't get along very well together on a personal level. In 25 years we've known each other. We've never had dinner alone together. We do not choose to hang out if we don't have to be in proximity. And yet, there's a couple things that happened and they're pretty remarkable. When Jamie was asked if it was an exaggeration to say he didn't like Adam, he stated, no, we certainly have respect for each other, but we aren't really friends. With this in mind, it's pretty remarkable the duo managed to remain professional and stick together for 13 years of television. They didn't stick to the show because they had an opportunity to work together, but instead 
said they had their own individual reasons for doing the show. So when the time came, they didn't hesitate to split ways. The Bill team, on the other hand, were the polar opposite to Adam and Jamie, with Carrie, Tori, and Grant getting on extremely well and becoming close friends. When the decline in interest in Mythbusters happened, Mythbusters was obviously still an incredibly popular show. However, compared to ratings in earlier seasons and the need to up the stakes of every episode, and less iconic movies and TV moments to choose from, it becomes unsustainable when viewership is declining. One online commenter stated, I feel like Mythbusters started to lose ratings because they kind of just ran out of good myths to bust. And a lot of YouTube shows where people test things or build crazy contraptions started popping up as well, so it was just less relevant. In a Q&A at one of his live shows, Adam was asked directly by a fan why the show ended. So Mythbusters was on for 14 years. Uh, every Everything in the world has its own bell curve. And thank you. We were, we were on long enough to negotiate. I negotiated my contract three separate times. Yeah, that's, that's its own story. But the last time was in 2010, and that was a five-year contract. That contract was, so we signed that contract when our ratings were at their absolute peak. And then slowly over the next five years, they started their, their slide. They still was respectable ratings by the end, but that slide happens. And what that means is when you get to the end of your contract, do you keep the show going? Well, Discovery's not going to want to pay us more to keep on doing the show. And frankly, after 14 years, and I'm 50 now, I'm tired. I'm definitely not going to do the show for less. And more than that, it seems like a proper place to put it to bed. It felt like all of these things were meeting at the right moment. Another major factor in the decline of Mythbusters was the disappearance of Kerry, Tori, and Gran. In 2014, the Discovery Channel announced that the trio would be leaving the show, and the Mythbusters would now focus entirely on Adam and Jamie. The reason for the exit of the build team was mainly due to contract negotiations. Producer Dan Tapster stated, We were very keen for Grant, Carrie and Tori to be part of the show. We are a massive fan of theirs and what they did over the 10 years was phenomenal. There were negotiations and based on those negotiations, they opted out. It's a shame for them, it's a shame for us but it gave us the opportunity to reinvent the show, which it kind of needed. A lot of fans speculated that the exit of the trio was because there may have been some underlying beef like Adam and Jamie. However, these speculations would be put to bed as the former Bill team starred a Netflix White Rabbit project in 2016, a show investigating topics such as jailbreaks, superpowers, and World War II weapons. Basically, a very similar show to Mythbusters. While proving to be popular, the show only ran for eight episodes before being cancelled by Netflix. Mythbusters continued for two more seasons, however ratings declined even further with the Bill team being axed from the show. Most fans were upset about them being being cut from the show because the pacing of the flicking between the antics of Adam and Jamie with the build team made it an extremely well balanced show. Some people have also argued that Carrie was the only woman on the show, which was important representation for young women, as the STEM fields are mainly male dominated, so removing an important female figure within the science and engineering zeitgeist, it gave even less reason for some people to watch the show. With Adam and Jamie's five year contract coming to a close, negotiations took place. However, with Adam and Jamie refusing to do the show for less compensation, and the Discovery Channel refusing to increase the budget of the show, Discovery and the duo called it a day. The final episode aired on the 5th of March 2016, with a reunion episode, which turned out to be the highest rated Mythbusters show of all time, after bringing back the entire cast from previous seasons to reflect on their time on the show. I, I'm sad that they removed Cary Grant and Tori from the show. We did not want that, Jamie and I did not want that. And it seemed like, again, this is the right way to put it to bed. The, the best part about all of that is that Discovery agreed to let us call it a final season and to say goodbye to the fans, because that doesn't happen on scripted reality. Uh, and actually the truly best part was getting to sit down at a table with Cary Grant, Tori and Jamie and I and talk about the old days, because I love those guys and that felt like a really great homecoming. After the ending of the show, Adam returned in later years to host Mythbusters Jr. and a separate discovery show called Savage Builds. Alongside this, he now posts basically daily on his own YouTube channel. Jamie practically left show business and now focuses on his own projects and also received three honorary doctorates from Villanova University, University of Twente and Lut University of Technology in Finland. He would go on to become a professor of practice at Lut University for a five-year term, giving his first lecture on prototypes in November 
November 2021. After their ejection from Mythbusters, Kerry and Tori continued to host multiple shows, from White Rabbit Project to Thrill Factor, while both also taking occasional breaks from the show business world, which isn't surprising considering the length they are on Mythbusters for. On the 13th of July 2020, at the age of 49, Grant Imahara sadly passed away. Fans in the entire Mythbuster universe paid tributes to Grant, and as a result, the Discovery and Science Channel ran a marathon broadcast over two days in his honour. In 2020, his family and friends, including the Mythbusters crew, announced the Grant Imahara STEM Foundation, providing mentorship, grants and scholarships to underserved youth pursuing STEM-related fields. Mythbusters was so successful because it caught lightning in a bottle. It was the right show at the right time, with an incredible on-screen chemistry to integrate itself into the zeitgeist, all while inspiring future scientists, engineers and creatives. Regardless of their off-screen relationships, they had mutual respect and managed to project an incredible chemistry without coming across as fake, something which is incredibly rare to come across in TV shows. Thank you so much for watching this video, it really does mean a lot to me. Make sure to follow all of my socials at Fat Mima, like, subscribe, and comment below what you want to see next.